Today I'm going to make myself very unpopular by configuring Linux using, um, well, PowerShell. So first off, I'm going to say there's some prerequisites I've already done. So we've already got open SSH running and we've already configured so I don't need sudo password every time. Now, uh, in our configuration script here, what we have is a username, a manager IP, a swarm worker IP, which is an array, so it can be multiple um, IPs in case we need to configure, but we've only got one in our demo, so we're going to uh, go ahead with just that single IP. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the rest of the commands because I will be leaving a link to the script that I'm using. So I'm just going to open the PowerShell terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run the script from PowerShell. Now, what this is going to do is initially it's going to configure the local machine that I'm connected to as the worker. Then, sorry, as the manager, rather. Then it's going to go through looping through each one of the machines that is in the worker configuration. So like I said earlier, we've got a single IP address in this case, but if I had multiple IP addresses, so I have multiple workers, it will go off and configure each one of those in turn. So what we're going to see here is um, the Docker screen is going to pop up a couple of times in terms of the configuration because it's installing it multiple times on each node. Now, this is not the most efficient way, and I do know this. Um, in terms of I could run each one of these in a child process or something, or I could do a, a in parallel option. But right now, just for demo purposes, and we've only got a single node anyway, um, we're just going to run through sequentially. Now, once this is finished, we'll be able to look at how many nodes are configured within our Docker Swarm using the regular Docker commands, which is the uh, Docker space node or nodes, I forget, uh, space ls to list all the, the existing nodes within our Docker Swarm. So as you can see, uh, we get the final output and we can see that our, the last output was actually this node has joined the, the work as a worker. So if we do a quick docker nodes ls, I think it is, or docker node, docker nodes ls, no, it's docker node, okay. Um, we get our master, or in this case manager rather, I should not use the master anymore, uh, manager and we have our worker node. So we've configured successfully our docker swarm using a PowerShell script. Now I want to kind of go quickly into another part of this, which is PowerShell on Linux. So one of the reasons I want to show you this is because it's important to know how Linux and PowerShell work together. So if I do a DF output um, and I want to, let's say, grab a couple of columns, I can do a uh, AWK grab print and then tell it the column numbers I want. So let's say as an example, I wanted file system, so that would be one. Um, let's say I wanted available space, which is what, that's column four and used, which is what, column five. So we can just go ahead and put those in and I can kind of print that information out. And that's a simple enough collection and that gives you it, but it's not very pretty, but it's still it's, it's output. Now the interesting one here is it's removed all the white spaces. And the reason I'm interested in that is because those blank spaces make a lot of, well, frankly, space. And you've also removed columns that you're not interested in. So when we do something in PowerShell as an example, and we say, okay, um, give me the output, it just takes from Linux the raw output. So as an example, if I just say, okay, I'm gonna create a data variable, and I push the df into it. So I go data equals df command. It takes everything just as raw output. Now, if that means I type data, I can see the data, but if I want to manipulate or look at column values, so let's say I want to pipe this, I'll do a convert to JSON. Um, most likely JSON is one of the easier ways to read it. You can see that we have the first line with the title columns, with the white space in between those columns, but also it, that's an entire row. So if we were to look at this from an array perspective and we say, okay, give me row zero, there's our columns. If I say, give me row zero to uh, row two, maybe we go row one. We can see we get the first two lines. Now, if we wanted to separate that and let's say uh, break it up into 
chunks. So we say, okay, we'll, we'll do a split by, and we use the, again, empty spaces, so the white space in this on row one. So we should get the UDEV block size, etc. You can now see how many lines are created because that information now contains lots of space in between. So you can't just pipe stuff in PowerShell as easily in Linux. So if we use the combination of the previous commands with the AWK and then piping it into a variable, we would eliminate those spaces and make it much easier to work with. And that's something that really needs to be considered when working in Linux.